Hey guys, so this is here bringing you another video and welcome to the extra video of the day which is going to be a Q&A video. I do these generally once a month and the reason why I've always done them is because when I wasn't a YouTuber, when I was somebody that was just like watching content, sometimes I had questions for the YouTubers that I watch and it's obviously very hard usually to contact them. I will say I do try to make an effort to be a more contactable YouTuber. Uh, if, you jump, if you jump on the Discord server, you my Snapchat, Twitter, I generally do quite well, I think. But this once a month is a definitive, like you can ask a question and you're more likely to get it answered than not. Uh, and what I do generally is if people have questions and I don't answer them, I try to just reply to them in comment version rather than actually saying it in a video. Uh, but we've got two ways that we're going to be doing it. So we've got both Twitter and we've got Discord. So I'm going to start with Twitter. Um, also, just to make the point, I'm going to try and, you know, promote it in most of my videos from now on. Um, today is July the 3rd of me uploading this video. July the 5th is my birthday and I'm going to be doing a birthday stream. Uh, basically, again, as a YouTuber, it's another work day and normal people work on their birthdays and it's not like my friends are off to have fun. They're all working as well. So I thought, hey, I'm going to stream. It's going to be starting 1 p.m. UK time and then going to about 5 p.m. UK time. We may do a little bit of ranked, but we're more going to do like all random Earths, maybe ARAMs and just do some fun stuff um, and, you know, just have a good time, basically. So again, July the 5th is my birthday and that's when the stream will be also furthermore if you guys haven't checked out already the second channel huzzy extra i've got a big jurassic world series happening on that channel episode one is actually uploaded on the main channel and episode two onward is on the second channel but let's get into the questions let's just you know just thought i'd get those announcements out the way uh first one is random what is my favorite color uh it's between like a irish green like a bright Irish green and probably like a, a cool blue, like in, on the Huzzy Lion. So it's kind of like that. Um, next one is, if I were to design a champion based on myself, what role or niche would it fill? Probably a top laner, I would imagine. And I would probably make it a kind of like a Talia version, but a tankier bruiser earthbender. That's what I would do. And, you know, you could you could flesh out that in the lore. Like, Talia can make Earth bend, and then you can have a tank version. You could have an AD carry version. Like, just saying, right, it should do more Earth benders. I, I'm a, I might be a bit biased, but sure. Uh, favorite bot lane champ? Probably Ezreal. Um, there is actually a video in the upcoming days of me playing Ezreal, and it was really fun. So, yeah, Ezreal. Um... Someone is saying is... Um, someone is going to university in August. Do I have any tips... Uh, for people in their first semester or first ever time. Um, my tip is do what you want to do and don't get pressured into anything else. Like that's what university should be is discovering who you want to be more than anywhere else that you've ever been. More than secondary school or high school, more than sixth form if you're from the UK or upper high school. Uh, it's where you kind of kind of go, this is who I want to be, more so than not. And obviously you can always change that, but you're specializing your degree, which means you're going to be specializing what you can work in and you're qualified for. So really just do what you want to do and friends and that, they'll come. You know, a lot of the time if you're picking a topic that you're interested in, hey, the people that are around you, well, if you're picking a very specific topic, well, so are those people. So you've already got something really big in common. So just my biggest advice is just do what you want to do and uh, that will probably be like the best. Um, next thing is, is it worth to play League anymore slash come back to it? Uh, I have left it for a good while now and some of your games, it doesn't really look good anymore. Uh, also, are you playing any side games? Any recommendations? I, I, it's up to you. Like again, League is a video game. That, that, that's it. League is a video game. So if you're having fun with it, amazing. You should keep playing it. If you're not having fun, that's it. It's a, it's a very personal thing. Am I having fun with it? Well, recently I said I've been hating the meta and I gave the analogy that if you know if you take zero percent to hundred percent, zero percent you hate league and hundred percent you love league. I'm usually about an eighty percent on the average. Recently, I went down to probably about a fifty percent. Uh, I'm probably back now to about a sixty-five percent because the funneling strat isn't really happening anymore. I haven't seen it in solo queue in a while, and also there does seem to be more AD carries in the bot lane than not. Occasionally, there will won't be like the Ezreal game that I mentioned, where against a Swain in the bot lane. So occasionally, there are some weird picks still, but it is kind of going back that way. And I do think that it is purposely going back that way because people have left the game, like such as yourself. People have left because of this. And I know a lot of people have the, the impression of, oh, those people, like, they're crybabies, they left, oh, screw them. No, like, that's a bad way to think. You don't want people to leave the game at all. 
Uh, if people are leaving, there clearly is something wrong. And if, if you are dragging out or like making people go away who have played the game for nearly 10 years, to me, that's the group you really don't want to leave because that is your core. Uh, but as for other games on the side, um, not really. Uh, World of Warcraft is starting again next month. Uh, Battle for Azeroth I will be playing. Um, but yeah, not, I'm not playing anything crazy in my spare time, to be honest. I, tra I tried Realm Royale last night and I came third in my first ever game. That game is, nah, it's not for me. It's a bit too basic. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Uh, Jurassic World Evolution, I I'm enjoying that and I'm doing the YouTube series on it. So I guess there's that. Uh, next one is I recently got back into Pokemon Go. Do I like the changes they implemented on the game? It's definitely better. It definitely feels better when I first started playing in 2016. It, it feels more polished. It doesn't disconnect. And there's more features. Uh, you know, recently there's the gifting and trading system. So yeah, no, I, I've, I've been enjoying it. Like I've been going on cycles. If you don't know, I, I bought a bike. Um, if, if I remember, I'll bring up the bike right now on the screen and I'll just say it is a specialized cross trail 2018 hybrid. Uh, it was a fairly pricey bike, nothing extreme. You know, when you go on these bike websites and bike stores, there's bikes for over $10,000 where the one I got was 700 pounds, which is about $900 roughly, nine to a thousand hundred, uh, 900 to a thousand dollars roughly is what I spent on mine. And it's a good bike. It does everything that I need. It's a hybrid, which means that it can do both road and track. So if I went on a dirt track nearby, it can do that perfectly fine. And it's it's great. And I've been really enjoying that, especially when sometimes when I'm in my room all day, it's sometimes just nice to go and cycle. And, you know, the bonus is playing Pokemon Go. And I'll actually give everybody a big um, tip for Pokemon Go is this. So this is my phone. I have got a, you can see like, what the hell is this thing? So basically this is a bike mount case that on my bike, I've got a little thing that this basically clicks clicks onto. And then I can have my, my phone facing me and it's a normal protective case. So it's really good. Would recommend that. I can't remember what they're called. Uh, quad lock. It's called quad lock. Not sponsored. I bought it and they're fairly expensive. Uh, but yeah, I'd recommend. Um, yeah, Pokemon Go, I've enjoyed it. <clears throat> I'm getting there slowly. You know, I'm, I'm doing a lot of catching up because I played it for a couple uh, months in 2016. And then I didn't play it at all until like a month ago. Um, so it is taking me a little while to catch back up. Uh, next one is, what is the most common in-game mistake people make that prevents them from climbing in ranked? They don't look internal. Um, again, I do this in commentary because I'm commentating, but you can bet your bottom dollar that what I'm thinking in my head is different really to what I'm saying in a commentary. I am basically just describing a commentary, but when I'm looking to climb, I'm looking at what I'm doing. Because that's all that matters. Like, the common denominator to every single ranked game is you. So who cares, like, if your teammates are doing bad? It's you that needs to do better. So when I'm playing on my main account in my spare time... I'm not thinking about my team at all. I'm just thinking about me and what I can do more. And again, we're, we'll say tomorrow starting is the main account content again. And one of the big differences I'm, I'm doing now with the main account is I'm only going to be playing Huzzy's Greatest Hits. So all champions that people have been watching me for the past few years of champions I'm more known for, that's what we're playing. And the reason for it is because I need to think less about those champions mechanically, uh, which enables me to one, play better, um, because I play them champions better overall. But two, it allows me to commentate without thinking about what I'm doing. Um, which obviously to me that is a big deal. So to you is yeah, just focus on yourself and play champions you know. It's pretty much that simple. And we may have one more from Twitter, and if not, uh, we'll jump over onto the Discord. We have a couple more actually. Um, what would be one big change that you would make in League of Legends? Um, again, my changes, a lot of them would be controversial because the the base mechanics of the game I like. It, again, my whole change would be wanting to try and promote people playing a lot of champions rather than go down in champion size and pool. And that's obviously why I don't really like next season's ranked is because it's only going to make people go on less and less champions, which I actually think is bad for the game. So I would do something that I would promote and maybe reward people for playing more stuff and climbing. I think that would be kind of cool. Um... What would be one change that you would make in my in life? Well, in my real life right now? Um, poor, like the whole obviously losing weight thing has obviously been a big thing of me for the past couple of years. And we, we're doing fine. Like I am actually losing weight cons like right now. Um, I've so far lost about nine pounds in the last couple of weeks. Um, you know, it is getting there, but probably get out more. But it's very hard to do. You know, how many of you guys know YouTubers that upload two videos a day every single day? Like, again, if, if my circumstances change, 
then maybe that will slow down. But for right now, the way that I've always seen it, because I don't have anything else going on, I may as well just maximize what I'm doing. I I'm still having fun. It's not like, you know, it's work, sure, but it's not like the hardest work in the world. So I may as well maximize what I'm doing. You know, one day or sometime soon, if I get a girlfriend or something and I'm a bit more busy or my friends move closer by, then sure, maybe I'll be a bit more busy and I do more things with that avenue. But right now, I may as well maximize what I'm doing here because one, it's good. It helps my future and I'm enjoying it. And you guys seem to enjoy it too, which is obviously, th to me, that's the most important thing. And then I would say to the final uh, question of this on Twitter is, if I could tell a 10 or a 12 year old Huzzy something, what would it be? Don't stop exercising after the injury. Um, so basically, if you have no idea, uh, I used to be very, very, very big into sport and um, I got an injury. Uh, well, I had an injury for years. It's called Oshkud Schlatter. Basically, it's a disease of the knees. It's not really a disease, but they just like to call it that. Basically, when you're growing, this especially affects teenagers, that your cartilage, I think it's your cartilage in your knee isn't keeping up in growth with the rest of your knee. So the bones are getting bigger and the cartilage isn't. So basically, it's stretching the cartilage all the time very very painful and basically it got so bad that one doctor's told me to take a year off sport but this was when I was in my prime of sport in the A-League football in county athletics I was like I can't do that and basically it got so bad because I was ignoring the doctors that Sunday is game day here in the UK for me my football games I sometimes couldn't walk on a Monday morning that sometimes I literally had to go into school late because I could not walk um, so when that started to happen a bit more frequently, it was kind of time for me to sit down and kind of go, I have to quit sport. And the annoying thing is I quit cold turkey because I guess, you know, as a teenager, you're kind of, you know, you're a bit messed up in the head with all the hormones and puberty and that. So maybe, maybe I went a bit extreme that I was just so annoyed and I hated sport and I really went opposite, even though I, I loved it and I still do. I should have done swimming or I should have done cycling, like something that didn't take the pressure off my knee. It was just running. It was sprinting and running that I couldn't do anymore. But because I had to quit football and I had to quit athletics, I quit everything. And that is probably the biggest mistake I've made in my life because that's where I gained all the weight. Um, but, you know, it happened and it's something to learn from. And hopefully I can pass that down to you guys. But anyway, sorry about that. That was, that was a bit of a, you know, a down moment. But I've, I've told the story before. Let's get onto the Discord, though. And again, we're going to be going to English. We'll be going for about 20 minutes to half an hour. We've been going for 12 minutes. So we've got a bit more time to go. So let's get into it. Is the first question is... Da -da 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 um... If you could continue YouTube instead of becoming a pilot, would you do it? 100%, yeah. Um, the only reason that I'm, like, always looking to the future a bit is because I'm not in the position that I can trust that I'll be okay for the next 10 years. It's like, I'll say right now to you guys, and I'm very comfortable saying this, if I was guaranteed that I could earn as much as I am now for the next 10 years, I would lo I would sign the contract. Like, I would be like, yeah, let's go, let's do it. But it's not a guarantee. Like, that's the thing. We don't know what YouTube's going to do. We don't know if the audience is going to stay. We don't know what I'm going to do. Like, something could happen. I have no idea. Um, so, yeah, like, the money that I make is very, very good. It's higher than a pilot makes it until, like, they're a few years in. Um, but I'm, I'm about my future. So, you know, that's why, even though I don't use my university degree, that's why I went to university, just to be careful about my future. And that's something that I would definitely recommend you guys to do. So... Yeah, I would do it, but it's just not a guarantee. You know, I am trying to do YouTube as long as I can. There's a lot of options open to me in the future. Pilot, obviously, is being one of them. Buying a house is one of them. You know, I've got a lot of stuff in the works, and I'm really not sure what I'm going to go with. And I'll say next year, 2019, I'll probably say, you know, it's July 2019. It's my birthday in a couple of days' time. I will say next, my next birthday, which when I, I'm, tw I'm turning 24 in a couple of days, when I turn 25, so a year, a year tomorrow, a year on the 5th, I reckon it's going to be the biggest decision making life of my year. Um, because I, I see myself still doing YouTube from now until next July. It's then from July, like 2019 to July 2020 that I think there's going to be a lot of th things that I need to decide. Do I buy a house? Do I go become a pilot? Do I take some opportunities uh, do i take some opportunities i've been offered in the gaming industry like th there's a lot and it's it's very pressuring but 
you know, it's cool to have options is what I'd say. All right, so well, someone's asking, am I going to be making World of Warcraft videos when we play WoW again? Uh, yes and no. Um, so World of Warcraft is definitely going to be a side thing of mine that I'm more doing for fun and spending time with my friends rather than content. It's not really going to be a YouTube thing. But, you know, with Battle for Azeroth coming out and, you know, it does take time, I guarantee that I most likely will do one day a week that I am streaming World of Warcraft uh, instead of League. That, let's say, I don't know, a Friday... And it will most likely be on an LCS day, so I probably will be streaming while LCS is on because I don't find that much is interest in it anymore. So I'll stream during LCS and it'll be World of Warcraft. So if you're interested in League, or you can just go watch LCS, but you can just watch me play WoW. And, you know, I probably will record our raids and I'll probably upload to the second channel, a uh, Huzzy Extra, any stuff WoW related. Maybe I'll do, like, one video on the main channel, you know, how is Battle for Azeroth, my thoughts... But mainly it's going to be on the extra channel. And um, I'm not entirely sure if I'm going to do it. But, you know, usually what happens when a expansion comes out is usually I do an all-nighter to level my character. Uh, I will be maining Hunter in Battle for Azeroth, uh, at least the beginning. But the problem with it this year is I'm actually going on holiday uh, around the same time that it's getting launched. I believe Battle for Azeroth is coming out on the 14th. I'm going on a holiday on the 15th of August. Um, so I don't really see myself even doing an all-nighter the day before I go on holiday because I don't want to be shattered during my holiday. So I'll probably play a few hours the day before, but nothing extreme. Uh, and if for those who are wondering, where am I going? I'm going to Rome. Rome is pretty much my favorite city to go to uh, in Europe from everywhere I've been to, and I've been to a fair amount of places. Rome is just the best. Um, so yeah. Next question. Uh, am I watching the World Cup slash England? Not really, but kinda. I'll have it on. You know, I've been watching a decent amount of the games. Like, I'd probably say I've watched about a quarter of the games, which for me is a lot. I normally don't watch football. Even when I played football to a high level, I never used to watch football. I've never been interested. Try to watch it a bit more this year, and I have been enjoying it, but the moment that someone does a drama queen over the top dive, I turn off instantly. It's gone. <clears throat> it's literally lost my interest because I hate it. You know, I would literally, like, when I used to play to a very high level, when people did that, and it was, again, that level that people started to do that, we just used to laugh at them. We literally made a point that look at them and point at them and laugh, and they stopped doing it. I don't know why that doesn't happen in football. I don't know why, you know, the Neymar won the other day. Put that on the big screen in the stadium and make the whole stadium laugh at him. That's what I would want embarrass the living hell out of them but they don't because these players are these amazing people that they don't want to embarrass and shelter them it's like it just to me it ruins the game but that's just me but i have been watching i will again i'm recording this before the england game tonight i will be watching the england game so by the time this video comes out we'll know if england beat um who are they playing again i don't even remember uh, it's not belgium i can't remember but whoever they're playing will know uh next question um when are the winners when are the winners going to be drawn for the gleam giveaway and the t-shirt design contest uh good question so the t-shirt design contest what i am planning is to basically make a segment at the beginning of one of my upcoming videos to show you guys the t-shirt designs and get your opinions on them and get you guys to vote on the ones that you know you want 100 percent to be made into t-shirts Obviously, I do have the final say, and there are, like, I'd say two or three t uh, th two or three designs. I'm like, yes, that's going to be a t-shirt. I'm going to give that person Steel Series stuff. Uh, and I also have requested Steel Series to give me more stuff, and that is on its way. Um, so the Gleam giveaway, again, in the next few days, uh, but because there is more t-shirt winners than I was expecting, Steel Series is right now in the process of sending me more stuff. So the Gleam giveaway may actually have to wait until that more stuff gets to me. But that should only take a week or so. So it's really not that far away. And again, what we do is when whoever wins the, the Gleam giveaway, your initials will be in a video and your location. For example, let's just say, T. you know, if you're Tom Jones, uh, you know, Tom Jones from Merthyr in Wales, all that will be in the video is TJ Merthyr. And then if that if you if that fits you, you'll know, oh, that's me. Where before, like some of some YouTubers have given too much information about the winners and winners have got hacked. They've got threatened. I'm not into that. So we're literally just giving your initials and location and that's it. And then you'll know if it's you and then you know to check your email. So, yeah. Next question is... Uh, will I do a fan meetup? Um, I've I've always done them, or I've always had like fans coming up to me when I go to conventions, which obviously is the place to go. 
Will I ever do a fan meetup outside of that? Probably not. Um, again, I will say... I, I suppose I can say a little thing. I did sign a document that I'm, I'm specifically not allowed to talk about things involving a company that might rhyme with Schmyatt. And that is going to be involving working with them more. And that may also include events. So that's what I'll say. Um, so, yeah. Next question is... Um, <clears throat> if you could, would you remove running champions like Trindimir, Udyr, etc. from the game? Would I remove them? It's a tough question. The answer is probably no, because they are needed for basic players. Like, no, you, no matter what game you play, you're always going to need some easier options and some harder options. And them easier options should still be enabling you to get to higher rating. And they do. You know, there's Trindimir, One Tricks, and Challenger. Do you... <sighs> I would potentially maybe change the mechanics a bit. Maybe, like, give them more interaction that's not just pressing a right click. Because um, a lot of people always say, like, oh, if you have a problem with Trindamir, how don't you have a problem with the vast majority of AD carries? They're completely different. The positioning on an AD carry is more important than auto-attacking, for God's sake, where on Trindamir, you, you're auto-attacking. That's it. Um, so there are differences. But, yeah, I think you need them. Like, they are... They are, like... They are needed because some players just aren't ever going to, one, care about mechanics or ever be good at the game. But those champions enable people to feel good still without being that good at League, if that makes sense. So I think they're still, like, kind of needed. Um, ba -bum. Uh, do I think the rumours are true that there are already a new champ going to be released? Well, yeah, like, there's always a champion getting released. Like, I can tell you right now... And this is common knowledge, so it's not like I'm going past my NDA. They've always got three to five champions basically ready to go. Like, they are very much finishing the design process of three to five champions at any given time. So, yeah. Um, next question is, how do you, how to stop caring about the game as much? I've got two permaband accounts and have decided to calm down and not be toxic at all. So that's your first problem. Um... Your hundred percent. Your first mistake is thinking that because you're toxic, it means you care more than others. It's a it's a something that I say because it means like oh, a toxic person must care, but it doesn't mean you care more. Like let's just let's just kind of nip that in the bud right now. Does do you who's got perma banned about league uh, have been perma banned twice by league care more about league than I do? No, you don't. Like no way. Like let's say it's equal. Like that that is completely something that you need to get out of your head. Like when you're toxic at people. You're probably thinking, oh, they're not caring, but they probably are. They're just not toxic. Like, they may just be having a bad game. You've got to take yourself out of the mindset that because you care, it gives you the right or, you know, that's why you're toxic. It's not why you're toxic. 100% it's not why you're toxic. So many people like me care about League, but not toxic. What makes you toxic is your personality. And I'm sorry if that kind of goes, oh, damn, that's a that's a kicker. But it is like, that's just the, that's the way of it. So it's something about your personality that just has a negative effect. Um, I've always said to people, and some people take it the wrong way, I've always said get help in a professional way because it's not the norm to even rage in a video game. That's what a lot of people don't understand. And, you know, what I would suggest is looking in your life and if it bubbles over into any things, like does your rage affect your relationships with your family or friends? And if it does, then I would very much recommend getting some professional help, like therapy or just talking to a doctor about it and see what they say. Because um, obviously, yeah, it's not a normal thing. And when when you're saying, you know, you want to get better, sure, it's that help and it's the realization that, you know, you don't care more than others. They probably care equally as much as you. Uh, but it's basically you have to take a step back and go, it's people's video game time and you don't know everybody's stories. There could be a guy that has just done an all nighter shift who now log in onto League to have his time that he's having fun. And you being toxic is then just ruining that. Like it, you don't have the right to do that at all. Um, you basically just need to take a, take a step back and go, this is a video game. You know, everybody else is playing a video game. That's what I need to do. Instead of having it in that toxic mindset of thinking everybody has to play like their life depends on it. Because they don't. And that's the end of it. They don't. No one has to. They're, no one is at an obligation to play crazy serious every single game. It's a video game. You know, would you go to an arcade and if somebody is kind of just chilling on the Dance Dance Revolution machine, are you going to scream at them? No, because you know they're just chilling on it. People are doing it on League 2. So that's what I'd say. Um, next question is... Um, 
at what point do i think a player should seek coaching um it depends do i think someone below diamond needs coaching on average no because i think you can learn everything to get to diamond from youtubers and streamers like everything um the only caveat to that i will say is it depends if you've been stuck in the same writing under diamond for years so let's say you know i don't think anybody below diamond needs to get coaching if you just watch youtube pay attention you look at your own like mistakes and stuff but if you've been silver for three years in a row then maybe it's time to get a coach because maybe you're just not fully getting what the youtube videos are telling you uh, and then above diamond above diamonds are a weirder one because basically you run into the problem of who is going to coach you so you know are you going to get a challenger player to coach you well i will say it's a bit of a weird situation because challenger games are so different to diamond games if they if they try to teach you like a challenger game you actually will run into problems in a diamond game because they're different the games play different basically i would suggest coaching should be more about mechanics than decision making because decision making is such a personal thing of the rating you're in i don't think a coach can teach you that very well so i if i was you and you're looking for a coach or you you're like okay i'm at that point I would look for a champion specific coach or specifics. So it's like, I want to get better at these three champions. Find a high rating player who's good with those three champions. And just get him to teach you those champs. Not about decision making. Not about like how to climb per se. Just about the champions you want to get better with. And that's I'd say that's probably the most effective way that someone can coach you in a solo queue way. You know, again, the coaches of LCS are completely different. Also, I apologize. I'm going to have to put the, the um, air conditioning on. It's way too warm in my room. It is one of the hottest days again. It, apparently, Britain is in a heat wave right now. And apparently, it's not going away anytime soon. Uh, apparently, on my birthday, on Thursday, it's going to be 31 degrees Celsius. Obviously, if you're American or whoever, you can make that into Fahrenheit. I think it's in the high 80s, something like that. Uh, but yeah, that's my opinion on coaching. It's basically when... When you get to that point that either you're above diamond or you're stuck for a few years, then I would suggest finding a champion specific coach. Uh, next one. Ba -ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Uh, when am I planning to move out and I've already found houses? Um, so the move got delayed, basically, if you have no idea why. Um, I was, again, my, my, I've got so many options that are available to me, which is fantastic. But sometimes it makes me confused very easily because it's like, do I do this? Do I do that? Do I do that? that? So I was looking to rent and basically renting came with issues of being self-employed that because I live in Cambridge, Cambridge is one of the biggest growing cities in England right now. It's the second wealthiest city in Britain. It's the wealthiest link between London is Cambridge That's the wealthiest link. So a lot of people from London are moving here too. So the property is like hotcakes that it goes within a couple days of going up on the market. And some days it even goes on the same day it goes on the market. So either a property I liked, it went instantly, or when I applied for it, they always chose a employed person over a self-employed person. Pretty much every single time. Uh, the only offer I think I was offered, and I was I was willing to basically pay one year of rent up front, and when you're considering that rent in Cambridge averages about £1,400 a month, that's a lot of money and i was willing to give a whole year of rent to one of these companies to be like let me move in the only offer i think i got was like two years if you give us two years then we'll accept i was like okay that's a lot of money so i was like nah so then my family sat me down and was like why don't i look to buy and i was like that's a good idea so then i had a meeting with my bank and it was a very good meeting but basically they just need one more year of tax stuff which is next april and then i will be allowed to get a mortgage and a pretty big mortgage too like a, as in good um so that's definitely an option open to me so next april slash may is when i potentially could then buy buy myself a house but then that's obviously what i said to you guys is that next july it's like what do i do do i become a pilot because obviously that costs a lot of money and if i'm going to become a pilot then i'm not going to buy a house so it's like what do i do so there's a lot of decision making i've got to do and the way that i kind of am thinking about it is if i decide that i 100 percent i'm going to become a pilot well i don't think i'll become a pilot in the next couple of years what i think i'll do if i go right i know i'm going to become a pilot i'm going to continue saving money i am though going to move out and i'm going to look to rent again and by then i'll have another tax year which helps like being self-employed um so that's what i'll do so if i so next year i either could buy a house and then just do youtube for the next few years after or i 
decide, no, I am going to become a pilot, so I'm going to just move out to rent and then do YouTube for another couple of years while saving more money. So it's it's a bit messy, but yeah, it, it's 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 definitely happening probably next year. So yeah. Um, how does one know which which role is his best role by playing them all? Again, it's what I've said to people for ages. When I see a new player settle into a role instantly, I'm like, why? Like, you could be better at something else. Like, I've had conversations with people who are one tricks. It's like someone say going, oh, no, I one trick because that's my best champion. Like, it's my best champion 100%. And then I ask them, so like, how much, how many champions did you play before that one? Oh, probably about 30. It's like, well, you're missing 110 champions that you didn't try out. How do you know that champion's your best champion? You don't. Flat out. You could be better at 10 other champions than what you're currently one-tricking or what you're currently playing as a role. But if you don't test and you don't experiment, how are you ever going to know? So sometimes that is what's holding one-tricks and stuff back is that they probably are better on other stuff. Um, and as for roles is, yeah, just play them all in normal games. Play them in normal games, play them in flex you, and then you can kind of discover what you're good with and then go into solo queue with it. Um, am I excited for the Ant-Man movie? Honestly, not really. I kind of find Ant-Man kind of lame. I'll still watch it, but yeah, I'm not that excited about it. And that pretty much is going to be it for today, though. I may We'll answer one more. Um, but, but, but how am I doing in these days with extreme heat? Suffering, but not as much as I, I presume other people. Like, again, I've got an air conditioning unit down there. Um, and obviously you guys can probably hear it right now. And obviously that was a fairly expensive air conditioning unit, but I knew I had to buy it because... I do this for a job, and if I'm in here all day, I remember a couple years ago when I didn't have my air-conditioned unit, I nearly fainted from heat exhaustion while in this very room. I was doing videos, and that's back when I didn't stream and do videos, so I was just recording by myself, wasn't streaming, and I nearly fainted from heat exhaustion. It was that bad. Like, again, right now, outside temperature is about 30 degrees. In this room, it's hotter, to, hotter than that because I've got a light monitors computer all blowing hot air because even like these powerful monitors that i have they have fans in the back of them that is blowing the hot air out of them uh, i've got the blind closed i've technically got the window closed um and britain suffers from heat more than other countries because our humidity is so high so the air feels really really heavy um because of the humidity so it, it sucks and that's why britain really struggles with heat uh, but I'm doing okay. The air conditioning, again, putting that on just now has helped instantly. So, uh, yeah, that's going to be it, though. I will say, if you've got any questions, uh, feel free to put them in the comments. Again, I'll probably be bored in bed around this video being released. So I'll try and answer some comments while I'm in bed later on. Um, and again, yeah, just a reminder, everybody, July the 5th is my birthday. So I'll be doing a stream on July the 5th. And also, if you're American, happy 4th of July. Obviously, that's tomorrow. Uh, have a good day um you know happy traitor day as a joke you know again a lot of people always have a weird reaction when british people congratulate people for fourth of july again i've always found it weird that people harp on about history when they personally weren't involved it's like it was your great 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 ancestors that wanted independence and guess what you got it well done that's awesome so I'd, i've never seen it as a bad thing but that's just me but that's going to be it if you guys did enjoy throw a like on it leave comments down below ask some more questions and i'll see you guys next time see ya